that, that's the, 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 the first question is maybe yeah. you could uh, uh, sum, sum up for us how, how the band uh, got back together again. Well, we've always been good friends, and we've always had that desire to work with the, what you would call the classic yes over the last couple of years me and Chris got together did some writing and talked about Rick Wakeman back in the band and Steve Howe and we just made some phone calls it's as simple as that I think it was more me and Chris really getting back together again as a writing force we hadn't done it for about 10 years and it was a good time mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's almost as if uh, yes has never really broken up or called it quits. I mean, it's, it's always there. It's always ready to be reactivated. Yeah, it's, it's an evolving... I, can't, I always call it like an amoeba. It keeps changing shape uh -huh. <laughs> and, and keeps going. You know, we, uh -huh. we, we strive to make good music, and sometimes it's very hip and commercial, and other times it's sort of dormant in, in the public side, but in, 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 in the business Sort of way, mm -hmm. but from the fans, they you know they stick with the band. They yeah. love what we do. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess it's, it's sort of reminiscent of, of King Crimson. That's another yeah. outfit that you you really can't imagine calling it quits for good. No, not not at all. Not yeah, at all. yeah. Well, what, it's it's kind of a, a unique concept in, in 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 the rock era, so to speak, because I mean bands are supposed to kind of come and go. They're supposed to be uh, they're supposed to have finite uh, li lifespans. Right. But obviously that, that doesn't apply to, to bands such as yourself. Oh, no. Sorry, just one second. Uh-huh. We just, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, carry on, Steve. Yeah, there was, like, like I said, there's this, it's sort of a, um, a concept alien to, to, to the rock era. Bands are supposed to have finite lifespans. And uh, mm. obviously, this doesn't apply. Well, it's it's strange because I really feel like I was given the chance to be um, in 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 music initially, and then I got in the chance to be in a great band, and then I got the chance to discover my potential as a musician. So, you know, I opened up a lot of different avenues musically when. I think if we'd have just stuck with Yes and tried to make uh, hit records and stuff, that would have been the end of the band. But because we all split off, you know, uh, Steve Howe doing Asia, uh, Rick Wakeman doing his solo projects, me doing John and Van Gales, you know, and Kitaro. So we, we, we all sort of uh, had the chance to learn more about music and the career that can be a longer career than most, and that's why getting back together is, is a sort of very uh, good sign of maturity mm -hmm. that we can still make good music together that was the most important thing I didn't want to get together and just make an album of the old 70s music I wanted to do some new music at the same time so we recorded uh, about two hours of new music some of it is on this new album and then some of it will come on the next album that we do which will be part two of this uh, live show Part two. Yeah, we're doing part two, so that basically the album that you, the people have heard now is out, and then next uh, February or March there'll be part two, which will be close to the edge on you and I, um, turn of the century, old songs from the seventies plus an hour of new music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, somebody on the internet was was quipping that uh, you guys had promised to. Uh, Reunite 22 years ago. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that true? We did. Really? We, we had this sort of um, seance in uh, Baltimore, and it was after the show. We said, "God willing, if we're still alive in 20 years' time." That was in 19, gosh, it was 1977. And we said, if we're still together mentally and physically, we should get together just to make an album. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sort of wrote it down on a piece of paper and signed everything. And I don't know what happened to the piece of paper, but it's, it's somebody. I think Chris probably has it because he, he always keeps things, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we are doing the same thing, getting ready 
to spend the next three years together into the next millennium. Mm -hmm. Are are, are you the the, the type of person that that, that always sort of holds on to relationships for a long time? Are you sort of a long-termer with with your friends and, 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 and business associates? Yeah, it's funny. I don't know too many people in the business. I don't know too many people in the in, in, in the musical side. I, you know, you meet people like Sting and and uh, you know Stevie Wonder and and, and and famous people, and and it's always great to meet these people. But you never, you know, you're not going to go out for dinner and stuff and hang with like these stars. So I've always thought of myself as a uh, a writer and a, a, a spiritual person. So I'm, I'm more interested in writing music about the future and, and symphonic music and even operas and things like that. That's the future of my life, you know. Mm-hmm. How about the, the, the work you've done outside of Yes? Are you, are you looking back in retrospect uh, on what you've done outside of Yes, what work are you most proud of, or, or, does it, or is it all the, the same? Just like... Well, most, most definitely working with Vangelis was a, a great experience because he was like a teacher. And Kitaro was really great because we were very much the same person, really. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm working with, uh, now I'm working with local symphonic musicians and piano p- players and uh, classical piano people. And so I'm doing lots of different kinds. It makes me more, uh, when I work with, yes, I, I don't feel too much pressure about putting all my ideas into yes i can relax a bit because i'm doing other things at the same time mm-hmm. and uh, maybe you could tell us about uh, h- how you guys switched from what is it victory records to castle well very simply uh victory records didn't really sustain any sort of promotional business with the band uh, they seem to run out of money and run out of, I don't know, interest. Mm-hmm. Because the band isn't <laughs> isn't a quick money thing. It's a, it's, a, it's an adventure. Yeah. And Castle were very interested in letting us do what we want to do for the next five years. Mm-hmm. So they signed us up to do some live concerts plus some new music, knowing that that's what we wanted to do. Mm, so most, it, yeah, most record companies would say, well, we just want a new album. But we said, no, we wanted to do a, a collection of the, the classic Yes music using the classic lineup and at the same time do some new music with the same classic lineup. I think that would be an advantage to the band, uh, an advantage for the fans that have stuck with the band, and really a great sign that music eventually can conquer everything. Mm. Is five years a, a, a long commitment by, by industry standards, or is that but you guys usually work in spans of five years? No, we worked it out that we can do it. We can, we can release uh, this next album we're doing now. That'll come out in the spring, then we'll tour for a year, and then we'll have a break and do another album that we can release in 1999, and then we'll start touring in, in the year 2000. And, and I think that could be a good ending to a great uh, story. Mm-hmm. So does the, does the end of the millennium mean anything to you? Well, it's the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's the beginning of everything. Mm-hmm. It's the beginning of a lot of things, and I'm, I'm very, very excited to let go of the 20th century uh, and move into the real, the real world. Mm-hmm. So you, but you're going to be seeing in uh, the 21st century as, as a member of YES. There's not going to be no, yeah. no, no clean breaks. You're going to just keep the... We're going to keep it going right through to the 21st century, and then everybody might just go their own way. We'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. But we decided, let's get together for the next five years and take it through. So what, what happened to, uh, to Tony Kay and uh, Trevor uh, Rabin? Well, Trevor really didn't want to do that. <laughs> mm. You know, he wasn't really interested in a long-term situation and Tony Kay was feeling more interested in the business side of things and uh, wasn't really excited about doing longer pieces of music mm-hmm. so you know the way it worked was me and Chris 
sitting down and saying, we've got to make a decision. What is the future of the band? And I said to Chris that we've got to realize the potential of the band and, and put together a band that wants to play music that is called Yes Music and doesn't have any else telling them, you know, unfortunately with Victory, they're always saying, where's the hit single, where's the hit single? And that's, that's a dumb thing to ask a 50-year-old person. It is, you know, and I'm now I'm 51, so please, I'm 52 this year, so don't mess with me, you know. I just want to make good music. Uh -huh. And you, you talked about, you know, the performing classic Yes music with the classic lineup. And yeah. uh, this time around, you've got, I guess, two songs of uh, about 30 minutes in length each. Uh, yeah. do, do the songs really have to be long to be to be Yes songs? Is, is not, not really, no. It, it's an idea that if you have a lot of talent in a band, that if you judge the music correctly and you make the music like a, a dream sequence and, you, and the listener can sit back, put his headphones on or her headphones on and just sit back and just go into where the music takes you, you'll come out of the other hand feeling like you've gone through a journey mm. rather than, uh, you know, you don't play yes music at a party. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't do that. You play music, yes music by yourself or with a couple of friends and you just listen to it and it can take you on a journey whether it's 10 minutes, 5 minutes or 20 minutes as long as it keeps you occupied mm -hmm. and that's the whole point yeah uh, so I, I guess your, your, your outlook and attitude towards this, this latest incarnation of Yes is, is substantially different from the way you felt at the time of talk uh, this, the journalist here I guess interviewed you at the time and you said something about uh, being so happy with talk that it, 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 it wouldn't really, you wouldn't be left with any regrets, even if that was the last Yes album. Yeah, that's that's very true. Mm -hmm. But but strangely, when we did the new recordings and we did revealing from an album called Topographic Oceans, mm -hmm. that was the fulfillment that I've been dreaming about for ten years. You see, when I was finishing talk. I was happy that that's the way the band with Trevor and Tony and Chris and Alan was working. Mm -hmm. But I was always in touch with Rick about doing a recording of the old long pieces of music. And Steve, I always said to them, before I finish making music, I, I really want to reinvestigate the music of the 70s that didn't get a great recording. It was okay when we recorded it, but I really would love to re-record it. And one of them things was uh, Revealing and Awaken. These were very important pieces of music to me. Now I can die in peace, you know? <laughs> I see. I see. So, so there, there are all these little sort of artistic ambitions floating around in your head. No, these have to be realized. Totally. You can't, you can't sleep until these things... Uh, no, impos happen. impossible. You know, because you set yourself up. Like, you, you know, you say... I believe in this style of music, and the critics shoot you down. Mm. But you have to stand up against them and say, you know, you know, no, mm. music is more important. Yeah, well, that, that, I think that's 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 true of any artist. But at the same time, you have to uh, bear in mind crass considerations such as uh, commercial success and whatnot. And this, this guy here mentions that uh, talk was maybe not the commercial success that we had expected it to be. What, what, what do you think accounted for that? Why did it sell as many uh, copies as... Uh... The record company put all its money on one song. And the one song that was put, it all, all the production and the promotion, and was a song called Wolves that I didn't write. It was written by Trevor and a guy from... Um, uh, Supertramp? Yeah, Supertramp. Right, right, right. And I never, ever, I pleaded with them on my knees, please don't put this song on the album, please. It is not, it, it is not really part of the project. But they were very, very obstinate, and they said, no, we want Wolves, and that's the flagship, that is the main song, that's the hit record. And I walked out of the room. Mm. And I, I never spoke to them again. Wow. I, I guess you were... 
ironically vindicated by the, the lack of commercial success of that. Well, yeah, no, no, I, I want, I want it, I wanted it to be a very big hit record, honestly. Mm -hmm. But, but I felt that the record company was playing a game that was 20 years ago. You know, you, 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 you can't put all your money on number 32. You know, I expect to win, uh, especially with music. There was so much good music on the talk album that I was very excited about going out and recording it and going on stage and performing it. And all the record company would talk about was one song that I didn't, that I didn't even write. And I felt, my God, this is not, this is not me. This is just business, man. And and I didn't speak to them again. I never will speak to them. Again. You know but, why? Uh, you know? But you're you, actually, John. You're a very lucky man because I mean, many artists have incidents throughout their career like that. But in your case, I mean, that's just maybe the one glaring example of when your yeah. integrity has been compromised. It happened once before with Big Generator. We had an album called Big Generator, mm -hmm. and the the song Big Generator was a great, great song. But they wanted to put out a pop song called Love Will Find a Way. And I said, please don't do that. And so I left the group. Mm -hmm. And I went to do Anderson, Blue for Wakeman and Howe. You know, I, I left the band because they just thought, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there to stand and pretend I'm 25 years old and good looking. <laughs> Forget it. So, so you, you obviously have learned from these experiences, but when I, I, I can't imagine it happening again. Uh, no, 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 I, I won't do it again. I, I, I said uh, at the beginning of last year, 1995, I said to myself from now on, no longer will I be uh, negotiated into trying to make a pop album. I will no longer be involved in trying to make uh, money just from quick information, musically speaking. I will no longer, I would rather, no, I do what I do now. I am busy learning to uh, orchestration. I'm learning a lot, a lot of things that are very important to my future. And that's got nothing to do with pop records. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong in pop records. I love some of the great songs. I, I'm, I would be stupid to say, oh, well, I don't like Elton John. I don't like Lionel Richie. I don't like Sting. I love them. Mm -hmm. I love all their music. But I'm not that kind of person. Yeah. It's simple. I'm very interested in other kinds of music, and I think record companies have said, okay, John Anderson, forget him, you know. So mm -hmm. I'm happy. You, know. mm. you, you talked about living in, in San Luis Obispo right mm -hmm. now, right? Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> it's ma magical here. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. And, and your, your work with the local musicians, now, did you... you did you seek them out, or they seek you out, or how exactly did the band? No, thing? it's funny. I would go to the local bar and listen to the Irish musicians, mm -hmm. and I've recorded them now, and uh, go to the local symphony and listen to them and ask them, could I write some music for them? It took a little time because they didn't know who I was so much, and then they said, yeah, okay, and so I'm writing for the local dance company mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But it's more like a, it's something like a village atmosphere it's uh, not a it's not a big city mm -hmm. but there's so much good talent here really yeah kind of a surprise yeah well, what, what brought you to san luis obispo well my wife's uh, sister lives here uh -huh. we used to come up a lot and i just enjoy the town uh -huh. mm -hmm. and it's very sweet to be here mm -hmm. but you're you're interacting pretty organically with you with your local with your local community very much because the, they've they've got this beautiful uh Performing Arts Center opening up uh, next month. Mm -hmm. It's like an, an opera house, so I'm writing an opera for next year, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited about that. Mm. Do you think you would have been the, the, the just as active anywhere else, or did anywhere? Yeah. Yeah, you're. you're well, yeah, wherever I've been, I've always been very interested in local musicians and local music. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I guess that, that does sort of give you the latitude then to concentrate 100% on yes stuff when you do get around to it. When it comes, yeah, yeah because I'm, all, I'm, I'm also doing four or five different other things. So yes music is like fresh uh, fresh air. Mm -hmm. And you, you talked about getting together with, with Chris Squire at one point, sort of say, you know, 
that was a great, great time in my life to sit down with Chris for a month on and off, and we wrote about a dozen songs, mm -hmm. and we're in touch with each other every other day now. Mm. And we just, uh, I don't know, we, you know, maybe he went on a journey and I went on a journey for 15 years, mm -hmm. and then we, we met each other at the end. Huh, so, so I guess just as Robert Fripp controls the destiny of, of King Crimson, you and Chris are pretty much at the heart of, of Yes's destiny. Yeah, we know what we want. We, we do know what we want to happen. Is, is there any sort of struggle as, as to who pulls the strings in Yes? I mean, there have been so many people throughout the years that it, 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 the, the, the power could lie in many hands. It's, just it's so different. It's like there's so many different ways of creating the music that uh, you'll hear, you know, the next album and the new music we're going to be re writing and recording in the next two months is very different the most yes music that I've been involved in. So I'm very happy about that. And what, what accounts for that change there? I think because you, in, in some ways I could, I'm writing with Alan White, which uh, I haven't written with Alan for a long time. So uh, I know I rang up Rick Wakeman today because I found a song me and Rick wrote 10 years ago and I just found it. It's called Axis of Love mm. and it's a great song. So I said to Rick, come on, we should record this for the new album, you know. So I'm waiting for him to call me back, because I had to leave it on his uh, on his uh, answering machine. <laughs> you really had just, just found this song, or had it, had it been in the back of your mind, and you had always been looking no, it, for it? No, it popped up this morning. I was uh, going through some tapes, and I said, gosh, I remember this song. Mm -hmm. And I rang up Rick Wakeman. He wasn't home. He's probably playing golf or something. But is that an unusual occurrence? Do you have all these sort of little gems laying around that you could... Really? There's always a lot of music around. Uh, it's e I, I always say it's pretty easy to make music. It's the rest of the business that's tough. Meaning that, uh, like putting it onto a record or getting, getting a, a deal, uh -huh. getting a record company interested, getting a promoter wanting to take you on tour. Mm -hmm. It's always tough, you know. Mm -hmm. So you, ha you, ha you have to, uh, I, I, I guess you have to make compromises then if you want to cut those deals. Well, not anymore. No, <laughs> I've decided, uh, as I said, Two, two years ago, 95, I said, that's it, that's it, no more, no more, no more. I'll just get on with life, and and if they don't agree, then I'll keep moving on in another direction. Mm -hmm. So we have about, what, two, I've got a list of about like eight guys who have been out, in and out of the band for all these years, and yeah. everybody trusts you and Chris implicitly. It's like they, they, they have left the fate of the band in your hands and will basically... Uh, come along whenever you say, uh, guys, you, you mind? Yeah. I think Chris is a very, very earthy person, mm -hmm. and I'm flying in the sky. Mm -hmm. So we, we complement each other, mm -hmm. and Alan always feels comfortable, and Steve and Rick and everybody else that's worked with the band are very comfortable when me and Chris are really locked in to an idea. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. the, the, the guy has made a list of all the, 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 the different yes personnel here, and he was just wanted, he wanted like a little comment from you on each of these guys, uh, starting with Steve Howe. Steve Howe is a brilliant guitar player, is a brilliant guitar collector. He has the most incredible collection of guitars. It's like he's a guitar, you know, <laughs> himself. He, he's just this magnificent. Uh, being who just seems to play guitar all the time. I don't think he, he doesn't do much else. He, he doesn't. He eats a bit, but that's about it. Let's <laughs> see it. Alan White. Alan White is your perfect uh, harmony person. He gets on with everybody. He's an, he is a very very powerful drummer. He, he he's like a juggernaut train, and he's he's so in time with the pulse of uh, our music, and he played on Imagine, so what else did you say? Rick Wakeman. Rick Wakeman's crazy, <laughs> but he's also still got all the talent that he ever had, a uh, remarkable musician, uh, he tells terrible jokes, <laughs> Some, sometimes they're okay, but... <laughs> Trevor Rabin. 
Trevor's an amazing musician. I, I always say he has an amazing capacity for music. And uh, he's very interested in the more commercial side of music rather than the, the, the depth of music. But he, but he has an amazing uh, knowledge of music and a great producer, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony K. Tony's a great guy, great musician, pretty wild on stage, mm -hmm. and pretty wild off stage. Uh, Bill Bruford? He's a very strange person. Very what? Strange. Strange? And we won't yeah. Lie. Well, he seems to be a very depressive, <laughs> he seems to be a very depressing person. Mm -hmm. Every time I see anything written by Bill, it's very depressing. <laughs> he doesn't seem to enjoy anything he's ever done. <laughs> of a hundred percent of his work in the last 25 years, I think he likes about five percent of it. <laughs> but I, I, I still quite, for my part, I think he is an extraordinary visionary as a percussionist. Mm -hmm. do, do you think he's very English? Very. Yes, okay. Uh, and then we, in parentheses here we have uh, Tony Banks. Peter Banks. Oh, Peter Banks, I'm sorry. Yeah, Peter's a sweet guy. He was a great guitar player with the band in the first two years of the band's life. Mm -hmm. And uh, he doesn't really have very happy memories of being with Yes, which is very sad. But it's very hard to be in his shoes because he's watched Yes be more successful over the years. And he maybe felt that he missed the boat. Uh, Trevor Horn? Trevor, as you know, is one of the top producers in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what his forte is. He's, he, he's certainly not a, a lead singer of a band. <laughs> he's a very good, good producer. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Jeff Downs? Very talented. I don't know much about his music, to be very honest. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then lastly, Chris Squire. Chris, you, uh, you've, you've actually... I, I think Chris is the best bass player in the world. Mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. If you listen to his bass playing, especially on the new album, my God, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. it, it really is amazing. So that's my that's my humble opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess it was, you know, the one reason why why Yes has enjoyed such such longevity is the fact that it was almost kind of a, a miracle that certain guys who were very musically compatible just happened to get together. I agree. And uh, it, 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 is that purely musical, or is there also a personality side? It's t actually, it's totally musical and very deeply spiritual, but not too many people in the band will ever admit to that. But I have a great strength in my spiritual awareness, and uh, I've been through some incredible spiritual awakenings through my work with Yes. And I, I believe there's a reason we've been together that is more than the music. Mm -hmm. But that's my humble opinion again. Uh, like when you say, you, wait, so, so, so you, because you're in touch with the spiritual side, that allows you to, to become more compatible with others? Do you think there's just a natural compatibility? Well, you, you tend to really, because you know that the, the end is justified by the means to the end. So you don't mind, in a way, taking a lot of crap to make it work, because you believe the end product is more important than getting there. Mm -hmm and how you get there, so you, you tend to fight a lot, not with the band, but with, within the business, within the music, within the structure. You fight, you fight, you fight to make it right. Mm -hmm. And that is the good fight. Uh -huh. you know. I, I guess rather than, than, than spiritual consciousness, that seems to be more uh, complete and total confidence in the fact that you're going to come up with something that's very high in quality at the end of the day, you, you know that... Well, in, in the end, m maturity always comes through and you say, my gosh, we do play well together, thank God for that. Mm -hmm. So that's the feeling you get. We, when we're playing together, it's an amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, John, I think I got what I need to know, and uh, okay. I, I, I thank you very much for your time, and, okay. and wish, you, wish you the best of luck. Wish you well, Steve. Okay, thanks Take a lot. Care. Okay, Take bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.